Hi guys, and welcome to the Stephen King Cemetery Club. Hi guys, Christine is now out on the street. Arnie has kind of fixed her enough that he was able to get a sticker saying that she could be street legal even though she isn't quite, and he ends up taking Lee to an away football game. And Dennis was very shocked to see Christine in the parking lot. Quote, seeing Christine parked beside the band bus was surprise enough, but when Arnie got out on one side and Lee Cabot got out on the other, I was downright stunned and more than a little jealous. Page 157. And Dennis has this visceral feeling about how much he doesn't like Christine. And he finds out that Lee also feels that way. She doesn't like Christine. And Lee kind of feels jealous, which she thinks is kind of ridiculous, but in essence it's not because Arnie is obsessed with this car. And he does kind of treat the car like another girlfriend. And at one point, Lee even asks him, how much time do you spend with me versus how much time do you spend with her? And he lies and he says, oh, I spend more time with you, which, no, he spends way more time with this car. And we kind of get a shifting in the narrative because Dennis is out of commission. He takes a very bad hit in a football game and I think three people end up hitting him at one time and he ends up in the hospital. He's unconscious for like two days and he was told he'll never play football again, which he had also been almost paralyzed. So I guess, you know, not being paralyzed, but you know, it, it could have been worse. It could have been much worse. So Dennis is laid up and so we get a lot more of the Arnie and Lee story. So now we're on part two, which is Arnie teenage love songs. Now, Christine is legitimately street legal on the 1st of November, 1978. And Arnie brings Christine home, which he knew was going to piss his parents off, but also why should he keep the car at a garage? It doesn't really make sense. You know, so it, it stands to reason that he would have brought the car home. Regina has a complete hissy fit. She is livid. She wants it gone. She doesn't want the car anywhere near her house. And Michael just kind of stands there and lets the two of them fight it out. So Regina and Arnie say some really awful things to each other. And, you know, Regina basically wears the proverbial pants in this family. Michael is pretty useless. He, he doesn't stand up for for Arnie at all and Arnie just gets in some really good zingers and kind of wins the argument. Regina retreats and Michael says, hey, let's go out to the airport. And Arnie drives him out to the airport. Michael is interested in Christine. He's, you know, trying to make conversation and he's telling Arnie that the best solution that he can think of which I think is a horrible solution, is to go to the long-term parking lot at the airport and leave Christine there, pay for the 30 days, and then, you know, continually renew her parking spot, and then he can take the bus. So he can take the bus after school to the airport, and then he can take the bus home. So it's, it's just all the steps involved. It's absurd. It is, it is very absurd. He's going to be saving money by not parking at Darnell's garage, but he's still paying for parking out at the airport. And the car is just really inaccessible. Whenever he needs to have it, it, it takes a bus, bus ride to get out there. So they ride out to the airport and take care of Christine's new home. And Michael also doesn't like Christine. He thinks there's a weird smell to her, it seems like something kind of dead and rotten, and he is uncomfortable with the car. So like everyone in Arnie's sphere finds something unsettling about this car. And as we get more and more into this novel, anytime Arnie kind of has a healthy relationship with a person, Christine will act up 
if they're having too much of a good time. So Arnie and Michael are laughing at something and Christine stalls for no reason. Like just completely has a little tantrum and stalls. And later on the same thing happens with Lee. You know, it's it's not it's not normal and the car just seems to be jealous. And we also find out that Arnie has been having these periods of being almost in a trance. Like when he gets behind the wheel of Christine and he just cruises and he doesn't remember getting from point A to point B or he doesn't remember working on Christine at all. Like he'll remember starting but then the actual working on her part is just not in his in his memory. He's not even sure that he's done anything to her. She appears to be fixing herself and he appears to realize that this is happening. The windshield, when Dennis had noticed that the windshield had some cracking on it and it was all spiderwebbed and it started like shrinking on its own, it, you know, that, that is impossible. It can't happen. And Arnie even acknowledges that to himself that he never replaced her windshield, but the windshield is perfect now. So that's, that's weird. There's a really great scene in here where Christine parks outside of Lee's house and just sits there menacingly. Lee wakes up from a dream and she walks over to the window and sees Christine there without anyone driving her and she realizes that it must be a dream that she's having still, so like a dream within a dream. And the next morning there are tire tracks outside but Lee didn't see them because they melted before she got out. So it's just a very chilling thing that this car is starting to stalk people. Buddy Rupperton and his gang go out to the airport because they have discovered that Arnie keeps Christine out there and they still need to pay Arnie back. And their friend is the person who mans the toll booth or whatever it is and lets people in and out of the parking lot. So they ask him to watch out for them and they go in and they just beat Christine to hell. They ruin her. They do everything they can think of to this car. And when Arnie and Lee arrive after school the next day to go use Christine to go shopping, Arnie goes a little mad and he is so furious. He gets a tow to Darnell's garage. He has a big fight with his mother. And basically he's correct in that it wouldn't have happened if it had been parked at his house. And he starts laying groundwork for saying that it wasn't as bad as he initially thought because as we have discovered Christine has these abilities where she can kind of regenerate and repair herself so Arnie doesn't have to do anything and he doesn't have to spend any money on her really but he needs to make it look like he's repairing her so he kind of downplays the severity of her injuries especially when he's talking to Dennis and Lee has already told Dennis the entire thing and she goes into great detail about all the things that are wrong with the car and how bad it was when they found it. And Dennis knows that Arnie is lying. Dennis is still in the hospital, it's Thanksgiving, and Arnie actually has this really sweet moment where he brings Dennis a Thanksgiving dinner and they eat together in Dennis's room and they talk about the car and that's how Dennis has found out that Arnie is lying about the severity of the car's problems. And before Arnie leaves, Dennis asks him to sign his cast. Now Arnie has already signed one of his casts. He has two legs, two broken legs, and he makes up some sort of story about the signature wearing off and he needs a different one. So Arnie signs his other leg. And then after Arnie's gone, Dennis compares the two signatures and they are nothing alike anymore. And all these little things that are kind of emblematic of LeBay start cropping up and Arnie has kept his his key ring with his initials on it. Arnie is starting to wear a back brace like LeBay wore and he started using the word shitters which is something that LeBay used to say. He's just absorbing all these little characteristics, mannerisms, everything LeBay and it's it's freaking Dennis out. He's getting very very scared. One of the people who helped destroy Christine, one of Buddy's friends, is Moochie Welch and he's walking home alone. It's the middle of the night or very early in the morning, it's dark outside. All of a sudden he sees Christine waiting for him up ahead and he realizes no one is driving her. 
he freaks out. He tries to get away because she is starting to come after him. She goes after him and she hits him, knocks him over, and just repeatedly runs over him back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And it's really graphic. It's definitely overkill. Quote, the thing in the street no longer looked like a human being. It looked like a scattered bundle of rags. Page 251. And then we have this excellent passage and description where Christine starts heading away from the crime scene and she is regenerating as she goes. So all of the moochy evidence is disappearing. So the dented hood or fender or whatever, the wheels, the blood, all that stuff start fixing themselves. The blood washes away, the um, dents start popping out and fixing themselves, and she just looks like nothing happened. So she, she gets to Darnell's garage, she opens the garage door with her little garage door opener, she just rolls in, parks in her little parking space, and turns herself off, and then that's it. No one knows that she left, no one knows what she did, you wouldn't be able to tell by looking at her that she killed anyone. It's just genius. I love it. I love the the whole aspect of a killer car who also has just the best alibi. You know, no one can prove that she did it. It's like the best cover-up ever. Quote, Christine sat in the dark and the only sound in Darnell's do-it-yourself garage was the slow tick of her cooling engine. Page 253. I love that description. Just the fact that you know, once her engine is is done, no one will know anything. That's it. And Moochie's not talking. Have a sweet day.